So you've saved up a little bit of money and you've gotten past 2020 and you're thinking, maybe it's time to reward yourself a little bit. You could buy Dogecoin and go straight to the moon and earn billions of dollars, or you could crash and burn to the earth because let's be honest, that could happen. Or maybe you could reinvigorate the economy, put that money back into retail and hear me out, buy yourself a flagship smartphone. But which one? Let's talk about it. So how did I go about making this video? Well, I started off with a lot of research. I went to websites like Android Authority, GSM Arena, and so on. I went to YouTube reviews that are in-depth and hands-on, and I started making notes. Notes about all the little things that were different between the flagship phones available to us. And I threw it all away because I came up with two realizations. One, most people are not going to be spending money on Xiaomi, Oppo, and Vivo if they're going for flagship phones. These brands are not known to be flagship. They're not known to be that premium. They've taken a lot of market share in the $500 segment and sub $500 segment, but none of them really appeal to anyone who's spending north of $800 to $1,000 including the Xiaomi, which has a solid contender for the flagship category this year. But Xiaomi is known for having adware and bloatware in their operating system. And until people get over that, until they prove themselves to have moved beyond that, I don't think they're a serious contender, not in people's minds anyway. Huawei is not really available in some parts of the world and Google services are simply not available for Huawei as well. So I've eliminated that. And that leaves me with OnePlus and Samsung. Yes, I have a bias towards OnePlus, but I think you'll see in this video that I've been more than fair to both of them. The second realization I came to was that between the two operating systems, the user experience has become very, very similar and as such is not going to provide you much of a difference. iOS users will probably stick with iOS. Android users may go either way, but really Android's come a long way and there's no reason to swap over anymore. So what is it that's really important to people? Well, I decided to sit down and look at various smartphone surveys that were posted online and there seemed to be a common theme. The things people liked, regardless of price point actually, seemed to be exactly the same. And they were build quality, usability, camera quality, and battery life. So let's talk about that. Now, as far as OnePlus and Samsung is concerned, the flagship phones are the OnePlus 9 Pro and the Samsung S21 Ultra. Let's start with the build quality. Both of them are going to have good build quality. There's not much to say because both of them are basically the same form factor. The one thing Samsung has done is tried to incorporate their camera instead of just being a bulky little camera bump at the back. They've tried to incorporate it into the frame and make it sort of a design feature rather than a blemish. For me personally, the Samsung now reminds me of the Borg from Star Trek. And even that's kind of cool in a way, but it's not a deal breaker for me. I'll leave that up to you. Some of the major differences between the two is that the OnePlus has a glossy back and the Samsung has a matte back, which means the Samsung is less of a fingerprint magnet. Having said that, you're probably going to slap a cover on both of them, so does it really make a difference? It's up to you. Which brings us to actually starting the phone up. Now, both phones have face unlock, but neither implementation is as good as Apple. So I'm not going to be talking about that. If you want that face unlock feature, then Apple is your best bet. If you want a fingerprint reader because you think that's more useful and versatile, then both OnePlus and Samsung have got you covered. However, their implementations are a little bit different. OnePlus has a light-based sensor and Samsung has an ultrasonic sensor. There are advantages to having an ultrasonic sensor. For example, at night when you try and unlock it, OnePlus shines a beam of light over the sensor and that might disturb you. You put your finger on it and it unlocks as expected. Samsung has an ultrasonic sensor, which is supposed to be more secure, first of all. So there's a point for Samsung right there. And because it's ultrasonic, there's no bright light shining in your face in the middle of the night. So in my opinion, that's a little bit easier to use, less intrusive to use. The other thing that Samsung's done is, unlike OnePlus, they've actually moved the sensor up a little bit so it's easier to reach. It's not at the very bottom of the screen. And the area in which you put your thumb is a much wider area. So it is significantly easier to use than the OnePlus. This is really important because unlocking your phone is something you do multiple times a day and probably hundreds of thousands of times throughout the lifetime of a phone. So it's going to wear on you and any little bit that makes that experience easier deserves mention. The Samsung gets the point in this case. 
Once you unlock the screen, the user interfaces are roughly the same. And I could make a 20 minute video on just the user interface differences, but I'm going to condense it down to two points. Number one is design language. Now, the design language of OnePlus and Samsung is different, but they both go for sort of a minimalist Android approach, and they're both quite good. Having said that, Samsung generally seems to have this rounded square, rounded rectangular look to all its menus and icons, where OnePlus tries to minimize the number of lines. They tend to be more minimal and they tend to be cleaner, whereas Samsung is also quite clean, but you've got those menu items surrounded by those rounded rectangles. You've got the icons that are rounded squares and so on. This comes down to personal preference. I think Oxygen OS is a little cleaner, a little more minimal, but frankly, both of them are going to deliver a very good UI experience overall. The second difference is design philosophy. And this might make a difference to you. Now, where OnePlus differs with Samsung in design philosophy is that if you had to configure, say, the always on display, OnePlus will give you 10 different options and formats, and you can choose between one of them, set it and forget it. There's not much more customizability beyond that, but what is there is arranged beautifully. The fonts and aesthetic, everything lines up really well. It's just done well. It's a set and forget approach that leans towards the Apple way of doing things a little bit more, in my opinion. Samsung, on the other hand, gives you much, much more configurability. When you get into the always on display, you can choose the font, you can choose the color, you can choose so many different things. If ultimate customizability is your end goal, then the Samsung is probably going to hold you in good stead. If you want something that's already done well and gives you some options that you can set and forget, then OnePlus is going to be the one you want to go for. Both phones ultimately give you a very good experience. Finally, when it comes down to ecosystem, well, they're both in the Android ecosystem, but Samsung does a few things that maybe gives it a little bit of an edge. If you're looking forward to using a pen on your phone, like the S Pen, the Samsung's got you covered. The OnePlus has no such functionality. You have to buy the pen separately, but it works really well with Samsung devices. There are a couple of other things that Samsung gives you, like the Samsung DeX functionality. If it's important to you, you can connect your phone to a display, a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse, and use it as a desktop. You have a desktop experience that runs from Android. It's actually pretty good, if that makes a difference to you. On top of that, Samsung also allows you in Windows to use its Android apps on your desktop. That's a pretty cool functionality. If you wanna just not keep switching between devices, you can use basically the Samsung phone on your computer without having to open up your phone and pick it up. That's another point in favor of Samsung. These functionalities, these add-ons that Samsung gives you, OnePlus has not been able to offer all these things. And therefore, I kind of give the ecosystem point to Samsung, even though they're both on the Android ecosystem. That brings us to battery life and camera quality. Now, let's talk about camera quality first. And in this case, OnePlus has made leaps and bounds with its partnership with Hasselblad, with the incorporation of newer, bigger sensors and so on. And you can see this in their photos. All the tech YouTubers out there say that the OnePlus camera has produced better quality colors. However, everybody seems to agree that it's inconsistent. Whereas the Samsung S21 gives you its usually oversaturated punchy colors, but it is consistent across the board and Samsung still has the undisputed best telephoto and ultra wide lenses in the business. And if that's going to make a difference to you, the Samsung wins once again in the camera quality as well. Having said that, the OnePlus is no slouch and I believe a software update in the future can fix their inconsistencies. It remains to be seen whether they actually do it. Currently, as OnePlus stands, it gives you a very capable phone, gives you a very capable camera, especially when it comes to night photography and night videography. The OnePlus has a larger sensor and therefore can take in more info. Night photographs will be better. Having said that, the S21 gives more consistent results and does a very good job at night as well. So I have to give it to the Samsung for camera quality. Now you've used your phone all day long, you've used that camera and you've come back from a long day of work. You want to go out with your friends. Which of them are going to have enough battery left over? Well, the answer is both of them are going to have roughly the same battery. Samsung comes with a 5000 milliampere battery, while the OnePlus comes with a 4500 milliampere battery. However, in the real world, this leads to a difference of only about half an hour to one hour of actual screen on time. It's not going to make a huge difference to you in real life. So given that both phones last approximately the same amount of time, it would come down to battery charging rates. 
Samsung has only a 25 watt charging rate, whereas OnePlus has a 65 watt charging rate. OnePlus has split its battery in two so that it can charge both batteries simultaneously at 32 to 33 watts, which means the battery is not degrading over time the way it would using high wattage charging, but because it's two batteries charging simultaneously, you still get that super fast charging. To give you an idea, zero to 100 charging on the Samsung is 70 minutes, seven zero. It's only 30 minutes in the OnePlus. If you put either phone on charge for 20 minutes, the Samsung will get you 36 to 38% charge, whereas the OnePlus will give you 66% charge. This makes it seem like OnePlus is the clear winner and it kind of is. Oh, and did I mention the OnePlus comes with a charger out of the box, saving you a bit of money. The Samsung requires you to pay up another $20 for the charger. So that should be kept in mind. I think both batteries are big enough to take you through the day. So it shouldn't be a big issue. However, if you're the kind of person who forgets to charge their phone or on a particular day, you've forgotten to charge your phone and you have only five, 10 minutes to charge it, the OnePlus will save your bacon and the Samsung will not. So that's something to keep in mind. I think overall the point goes to OnePlus. If you're really tilting towards a Samsung, I will have to say that the battery is big enough to take you through the day, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue, but I have to give the point to OnePlus for overall functionality here. So what we've seen so far is that both phones are built pretty well. The lock screen is better on the Samsung simply because the fingerprint scanner is placed better and is a little more secure and it's ultrasonic so it doesn't have that light flashing in the middle of the night. So Samsung has the easier unlock functionality. When you get into the user interface, both phones are pretty good out of the box. So I'm not going to choose between them on that front. Camera wise, the OnePlus is getting up there, but it's not quite there yet. The Samsung still gives more consistent results across the board. It has the best telephoto, best ultra wide, very good stabilized video. And there's something I didn't mention, the front facing camera. Okay, one point to the OnePlus because the front facing camera, the hole punch is off to one corner, which makes it the least intrusive implementation of the hole punch. But if that doesn't make a difference to you, like it doesn't to me, then the Samsung is actually better because the front facing camera on the Samsung goes all the way up to 4K, unlike all the other phones which go up to 1080p, and it has a significantly better dynamic range. There's a lot more detail and a much better image in the front facing camera of the Samsung. So for Zoom calls, WhatsApp calls, selfies, Instagram, all of that stuff that uses the front facing camera, the Samsung is the clear winner. Camera quality overall, Samsung still is king. When it comes to battery life, it's a bit of a toss up because both of them work pretty well, but I'm going to give it to the OnePlus because the OnePlus gives you that fast charging and gives you almost the same battery life anyway. So in summation, if fast charging and battery life is important to you, then OnePlus is probably the one you want to go for. However, overall, while OnePlus is really getting into that flagship territory, I think it'll require one more iteration of a phone and maybe some software updates to really get in there. Till then, I have to give it to the Samsung. Overall, it gives you better, more consistent quality across the board. And uh, oh, the OnePlus gives you two years of software updates and three years of security updates. And the Samsung ups both those numbers by one. Three years of software updates, four years of security updates, which means the Samsung will keep your phone updated right up to the point where you're probably going to upgrade your phone the next time. That's also another point in Samsung's favor. So I think I have to conclude this video saying Samsung is kind of the clear winner so far. I was rooting for OnePlus deep down inside my heart because I have a soft spot for them. But the fact is they're not quite there yet. Hopefully this video has been of some value to you. If you want to see me do a comparison of the OnePlus 12 Pro and the 12 Pro Max in a way that really makes a difference to you and me, comment down below and I'll make that video as well. If you want me to compare these phones with other phones in the market, comment down below and we'll see. I'll make a video. Why not? Thank you for joining me. I'll see you in the next one. Stay happy, stay peaceful, stay colorful. Oh, 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 oh,